American Girls Professional Baseball League was founded in 1943 by Philip K. Wrigley. Philip K. Wrigley was an American chewing gum manufacturer and executive in Major League Baseball. This was the first professional girls baseball league ever. It was formed because most MLB players were sent off to World War II. They were going to fight for our country and make sure we could all be safe. Philip was worried that ratings would go down for the baseball league and money would be lost. So he had scouts go out and watch girls play baseball. No one ever thought a girl could play baseball because everyone referred to it as a guy sport, but that wasn't true for these strong women. They believed that it could be anybody's sport, man or woman, girl or boy. So they started playing themselves. When the scouts went to look for people, they found extremely talented women. So they invited 200 women to try out at the Wrigley Field, which was one of the main fields they played at for games. But only 60 were selected for the roster in the beginning of the season. Later on in other season and later years, almost 600 players were in the whole entire league because at the time, girls were not equal to men. They were forced to wear dresses with shorts underneath, high socks right above the kneecap, and cleats as their uniform. They weren't allowed to wear pants as the guys were, and they couldn't wear baseball shirts. They normally practiced in that, but because they were girls, they were forced to do that. So, after every daily practice, they went to an etiquette class. It taught them how to be polite, use their manners, and be ladylike. If they did not go to these classes, they would be forced out of the league. The league was comprised of 15 teams. It started in 1943 and ended in 1954. One of their most successful teams were the Roxford Peaches, located in Illinois. They had won four championship titles. That's the most anyone else has ever won. Almost every single game that was extremely important, such as championships, playoffs, were played at the Wrigley Field, which is now known as the Cubs Field. But producers and movie directors heard about this story so they decided to create a movie about it to tell others the journey that these young women had to go through to become equal. It shows you how to get what you can and to never give up. These women never thought they could make it. They always thought they would just play like by themselves with their friends. But they were given the chance to play for real. Although the season only went from like two or three years for most players, that was still more than they could ever imagine. Although the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League had some really weird rules. If your hair wasn't cut to your shoulders at least, you would have to be required to quit the league. For example, one woman had her hair cut shorter because she didn't know this rule and was forced to have her head down the whole entire season until it grew out to her entire shoulders. And another pitcher was on her second trimester of her pregnancy and still played just for her team. This was very common. Most people would play while they were pregnant or they would change teams a lot just so they could do it. They made around $100 a week. This was their only job. Well, for most of them. Most women at this time were able to get jobs just because all their husbands and men left for war. 
But when their husbands would come back, they would have no jobs be a stay home mom again. Because that's what the world believed you had to do. As a woman. Although the world perceived them as tomboy, they were soon known as some of the strongest women the world had come to know. They won championships. They'd slide with their bare skin. No man could ever do that because they were given the privilege to wear pants where the women were not able to. Because of rights and circumstances. When Philip K. Wrigley gave these women a chance, he was helping them break the gender barrier, providing them with gender rights. He helped them prove to people that they were just as good as any man could, maybe even better. Although some people don't like to admit it, they were probably some of the bravest people they knew. They didn't know what was happening to their husbands, and they were making money, and all the extra money they did, they would give back to their family, so they could help them give back to what they did to them. After the league started slowing down, the league was officially over in 1954. So the MLB took over again, and now has continued throughout every single year since then. Although we wish the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League could still be around, we will still honor them today by remembering that they helped break gender barriers.